Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where I'm going to go poke my companion super fast. I checked the map and nobody's moved around but I do want to see if like people are chatting over the intercom. I doubt it but we'll give it a whirl. You don't have anything specific. Let's try engineering because Tally just got here so. Mostly, I have to like pick up, like my sensitivity is so low now that I have to pick up the mouse to move it. Do you ever feel awkward being the only Turian on the ship? I remember this! I don't know. Should I? I just mean, not having anyone else like you around. Mm, doesn't seem to bother Liara. But she can eat their food. Mmm. Kira's like, I really never thought about it. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Good to see you too! See, this is why I popped in. Let's see, do you have anything to say? Nope, okay, let's see if Javik had anything to say. No, well, maybe I poke him. Your Joker pilot insists I call myself mm. Prothe the Prothean. I insisted he allow me to throw him. I'm out surprised the he's still alive at this point, honestly. Seeing all these primitives flying spaceships is unexpected and very You dangerous. know, we evolved in the last 50,000 years. Commander. All of us did. Even the Quarians that you were so weird about. No, oh, no, that's hilarious he was weird about too. It's like they used to lick their eyes. And it's like the Quarians used to be attractive even when we basically thought of them as animals. I'm like, that's a really weird effing thing to say, Javik. Jellies. Honestly, I have watched my own jellyfish video. I mean, I made it for myself. Like, really. I mean, I made it for others, but like, 50% for me, 50% for other people. And it's been honestly really nice. <laughs> Even just like hearing. Like, not necessarily in here, but like when you're in the rest of the ship, you can kind of hear the ship's engines going a little bit louder. I do have a couple other video ideas. Like, I've said it before, but I'm excited for them. Because ah, they just really like the the Normandy. Nowhere else I am as comfortable in a fictional environment as I am on the Normandy. You know, just feels like home. Like truly, weirdly, very fictional video game home. You know, just like the sh just like the ambient sounds. It's always very weird when you're in um Mass Effect Two when you lose like your mass the, the vast majority of your crew, right? When they get stolen from you, um, and the ship gets very quiet. It's noticeable. Sorry, I'm eating this yummy oatmeal pumpkin thing my sister made me. It's like a no big cookie, but with oat or with pumpkin. It's freaking good. And I'm leaving tomorrow to go fly to Missouri to pick up. This is way back in time at this point for when this video goes up. But um, oh my gosh, so many um when I'm recording this video, I will be going, oh, I heard it. Signal confirmed. Going to pick up my sister in Missouri. She's going to watch her graduation. And we're gonna go to Italy, and I'm so excited. Okay. They're hoping that everything's been destroyed here that used to be here from the Asari. And they are hoping that the backup systems do not crash. Don't get mad, don't get mad, oh my gosh, everybody just chill. Name for a prominent Asari lawgiver. I'm gonna eat this and just look at this. Oh, that previous one said that it was named after a prominent Asari lawgiver. Talk about doing a treatise on how democracies, democracies hesitate to go to war with other democracies. I don't know. I'm not a political science person. I have no idea if that's true or not. Um, but it formed the basis of the Asari form of government, which is a true democracy where everybody actually, like, their votes matter. Not like ours in America where we can vote all we want, but the president, we can still, you know, 
whatever president gets the popular vote doesn't always win. It depends on what the, um, the oligarchy of the whatever it is that I just totally forgot about. The name of? Wow. Just went out my head. I've been playing video games all day. Uh, you know, the group of, like, individuals that I don't even think we vote for that actually do the voting. I don't know. I can't remember the name. I knew it! But, mm -hmm. Hang on, how do I do it? Wait! Hang on, okay, I messed up, I messed up! I knew it! Dang it! Alright, so far it's fine, it's fine. I know where to look now. Signal confirmed. I was being silly and I ate, I was eating food while I did it. Our Molly Sniper unit. I don't actually appreciate all the pop-ups that I get. They block, like, it's like every single achievement pop-up happens. And I'm like, I don't need to know. You're 10% on your way to the lost and found you. I don't care. The achievements in this game are meaningless. The original game were fine. They had meaning. They were, you know, some basic and some complicated. And now it's like, everything's super mega easy now. Oh, nice. These guys is, um, underground. I found something. Underground colonies are still doing well. Hiding from the Reapers. Oh! Our research uh, for the Asari, including edu educational institutions. Xenobiologists of all stripes have often visited the planet. Wow. The Reapers forced the heavily bought up population into surrender through threats of massive retaliation rather than assault by Husk Salome. Yeah, I think the Re it does talk about how the Reapers needed to, um, at some point in one of these planets, or maybe within a quest or a mission or whatever, talks about how the Reapers did have to, um, do things differently with the Asari. They couldn't do the same sort of strategy that they did with the other races because the Asari are basically all built in. They're all biotic, every single one of them. Uh, so every single one is their own. Like I mean, you have to have training. Not all of them necessarily have training, but like they can all do da like a significant amount of damage just naturally. So the Reapers have to take that into account. successful. So see, isn't Dakuna the Elcor? It is. Is this the this is the Elcor system? The move 
Uh, during, okay, so they were all warned, right? They evacuated everyone. The move was ostensibly made because the Elcor homeworld was a more defensible position. In reality, it may have been motivated by a subconscious herding instinct as most gazing creatures come together in large groups when predators are near. I think the Elcor are the only grazing type species. Everybody else has forward facing eyes and is more evolved to be predatory, but this is that's actually an interesting idea, right? That like ones that like species that are inclined towards like greater sentience potentially, like who evolutionarily like their brains get bigger or whatever it is that like involve, you know, gaining a technological sentience. Uh, potentially it's more the more predatory minded ones. I think I've read a theory about that somewhere. I don't know if it was a sci-fi book or like actual biology or like a theoretical paper or something that like the the need for predators to constantly be like on the hunt for food constantly adapting to environments to prey you know uh potentially increases their capacity for like faster like neurocognitive growth i don't know if i'm pulling all those words out of my butt or not but i i think that's a i think that was what it was about so it's interesting here, right, that as far as I know, like, the bolus aren't grazers, like, like, type, right? Um, uh, like, prey. Not, I mean, all predators can be prey. Humans are prey for anything that can eat us, really. But, uh, yeah, I think it's just the Elcor, not the... The only thing I can think of is a Hanar, but I would still classify them as predatory Jellyfish type creatures are technically predator, but you can't use the eye facing thing, obviously, because they don't have eyes. If you guys want to be wilded out, you gotta read about the deep ocean. There's some crazy stuff. There's crazy jellyfish down there. There's crazy animals down there that like defy all convention, you know? It's cool stuff. I was the whole thing I was like I was like, I don't know if I like this, or like they single out the Elcor as like, oh, you know, it's like, well, of, yeah, everybody's gonna wanna like, social groups. I feel like any any creature that like, evolves to be social is gonna like, come together during like, when there's predators or when there's a threat nearby, they're gonna come together, you know? Humans are social creatures, we do the same thing. Um, so I was like, this is a little weird that they're like, pointing it out for the Elcor, almost making them more, bait, like, 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 prey, <laughs> to, uh, they're more base instincts and like less evolved. I was like, I don't know if I like that, but this is pot it potentially is that, but it could also be pointing out the fact that the Elcor are the only um, grazing type species that have gained a greater set, like a space faring sentience. Um, but still. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I think I will find Elcor stuff here. This is probably Dakuna, yeah? Like, there's like a, like a treatise or something we're supposed to look for for them. The Elcor homeworld, the Kuna, overflows with natural resources protected by law from large deposits of precious metals to vast forts. The Elcor themselves live in rich grasslands near the equator. The majority of Dakuna settlements are tucked within this belt as the conservative Elcor feel little desire to build outside their comfort zone. Their twin capitals are for migrations from the wet season to the dry season, traditionally made obsolete by modern technology, but still observed. It's nice to do that, honestly, to like keep a feel for the land. The planet looks gorgeous, too. After the destruction of the Elcor Navy, Reapers moved in the ground troops to occupy the cities. This has taken longer than most civilized worlds, as the Elcor have spread out into smaller, distant settlements, reflecting their preference for close-knit family communities instead of densely packed cities. And you know, you, we never see what... I don't think we ever see Elcors that have been... Like, Elcor that have been modified by the Reapers. We have Batarians. Oh, also, Javik should talk to a Batarian. They've got four eyes. We have Batarians. We have... Well, yeah, um, that are turned into, oh my gosh, the cannibals, turn into cannibals, Turians turn into marauders, crows are turn into brutes, sorry, turn into banshees, and humans turn into husks. <laughs> the lowliest of them all, but like, the freakiest. <laughs> I mean, that's why they're actually so freaky to me is because they're very hu they are human analogous essentially you know like the others I'm like oh it's alien looking still you know like they're 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 modified alien but they're still alien but the husks are like that's a human ah and it makes me go uncanny valley for me because I'm a human I swear I am 
Let's see. Signal yep. confirmed. Usually the home world has something in the system. Oh good, maybe that can be done now. Code of the Ancients. Woo, we did it. Don't yell. Oh, this is not gonna work. Sometimes it's try you try to like figure out if a planet will have resources. The Alcor have left it untouched. Okay. The moon? The moon didn't have anything on it. It would have been caught. Alcor leaders felt that the resource for space travel could be better used on their home and took decades of persuasion to secure project funding to get to the moon. Archaic harvesting stations that recovered helium-3 from the moon's regolith were still functioning when the Reapers invaded and the Alcor station. They were able to flee the system. Oh, good! That's good. That is always a good to hear. I have one more scan before the- like, when the, and then they'll yell at me. The name after the first Alcor settlement in recorded history. The planet's name roughly translates to the deep and restful metal land with a somewhat of misnomer given that Tulum's thick, crushing atmosphere keeps the surface boiling hot and the air is a noxious mixture of carbon and helium. Carbon dioxide and helium. Man, I don't know. Uh, maybe if I fly around, I'll hear it. Try here? Nope. Alright, now it's just time to run and scan. There it is. Whee! I don't think I can do it. No! <laughs> it gives me small stress, but not great stress. If they gave me actual consequences, I'd maybe do Signal it less. Confirmed. Like, I do feel like they should give you something. Like, some punishment. Like, I don't know. Where they're like, do damage to your ship or something, and you get sent back if you do too much, like, you get sent back to the Citadel or something, you know? Reapers eluded. First discovered by Psy Pioneers in 430 CE, St. Vincent is home to a vibrant garden planet and home to a thriving Asari colony. Sandy beaches and romantic twin moons fuel a bustling tourism economy, while practical and secretive corporative matters are handled in the spiraling arcologies built arcologies. Arcologies. Arcology. I don't know what that word means. What does it mean? I assume it means building of some sort. A portmanteau of architecture and ecology is a field of creating architectural design principles that are probably nice to nature. Ecologically low impact habitats. Interesting. Even though it has been colonized for centuries, Naval feels like a frontier away from regulation and oversight. Consequently, a number of influential political lobbies have established a presence is on the planet. Is this freaking where Novaria is? Uh, yeah. This is another gas giant that's operating inside the terrestrial line, like the orbit. 
uh, or within within this system's frost line, where gas giants don't usually form, where terrestrial planets, like rocky planets, usually form. For this reason, the planets believe to be an extra solar capture. The alternative that its orbit is decaying is a horrifying prospect to the Tourism and Immigration Board of Naval since they will be in the gas giant's eventual path. Well, you guys will figure it out, I'm sure. I found something. Ooh, on um, both of them. Nice. I like to I like to spl I like to scan between planets. Because then uh, I have a greater chance of finding something. Or in this case, finding multiple things. The rings of Elune! We finally have the rings of Elune! Isn't that, uh. Volus? No, that is. Oh, sorry. Woo! I got money! Yeah, maybe I make these scanning ones just like an hour long. Oh, I've only got. Mm, let's see, let's see. Haha, -ha, sometimes out in these open, vast, empty spaces, then I get fuel. Which basically just like pays for my. Like finding all these fuel depots basically just pays for itself. You know, like pays for my explorations on its own. I could just leave this video like totally unedited. We'll see if I do that. You guys get stuck with an hour of me just flying through space, reading random entries, or just skimming them really fast. Let's do... Cluster, what, is, what do you have? Cerberus Spider Base? Sure. I don't think that's anything troubling. As in, I don't think it. No, yeah, we can't go to the next cert, like major Cerberus thing without Miranda. Miranda's got something for us whenever we land. Oh, it's Novaria! Okay, good. We do have stuff on Novaria we need to get. Speak of the Novaria Devil, and the Novaria Devil shall appear. Like most pegasids, it is thought to form outside the frost line of its parent star and migrated inward due to an unstable orbit. I do love bringing those to attention. I think it's a fascinating thing. We're like, they form out here, except sometimes they're in the inside where they're not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A scientific debate continues on how the other planets and systems survived. Its gravity may have played havoc with the planets in their early formation. I don't think there's anything to scan in here. Yeah, when the Reapers don't yell at you. Not very likely. While investigating the primitive anaerobic life of Valies, binary helix survey teams discovered a cunningly hidden anchorage belonging to the ancient Krogan warlord Mora. Many records of artifacts of the Krogan lands were covered and sold at auction. <sighs> <laughs> that makes me so angry! Like, this, this was a survey. This was a survey. Like, an official survey. And oftentimes, surveys are, are contracted by clients. Like, government clients or, like, um, private client, like, private land, essentially, owners. Um, there's no way they would have gotten approval to actually sell Krogan artifacts. You know? Like... Like, legally. That was something that the survey teams were like, let's make a quick buck, because you don't make any money on survey. Bastards. From something like the Krogan Wars, like, would have been wild to know what that guy had. Privately chartered, yep, 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 yep. Controversial. The war has brought significant attention to the other obscure planets, home to the most advanced research in the galaxy, some of the most advanced research in the galaxy. A magnet for Cerberus' interest. Further, Novaria's mass relay is the stop between the human Exodus cluster and the beginning of Solarian space. It's a safe bet that the Solarians will defend the borders to the utmost. I couldn't remember Novaria was in Solarian space. Or Asari. The Asari actually have a whole, like, a couple planets kind of dedicated to, like, less than legal practices, or it is legal, but they, like, 
What was that planet that we were on in, the, in Mass Effect 2 where you meet Thane? I can't remember the name. Um, Ilium came to me eventually. Ilium. Um, can't remember what my voting body is called, but I remember the name of the planet where I meet my husband. <laughs> um, but Ilium is one of those like weird, like it doesn't fall under Citadel jurisdiction technically somehow, but it is an Asari planet where they can like. There's all kinds of laws that deregulate, essentially. They, or they're regulated. Things are regulated. Like, slavery is regulated there. But they call it by a different name. And they get all weird about it. And you're like, mm -hmm. For such a supposed, you know, advanced and democratic race. You guys sure don't mind having planets where you can do things under the radar. Or barely legal. Only legal in the sense of, like, the law that you wrote yourself. And not ethical or moral in any way. Anyway, apparently the Solarians have Novaria, so. <laughs> but they also, they keep doing stuff like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we, we, up, we uplifted the Krogan, and that went poorly for us in many ways, but you know what, we're gonna keep doing it again. My friend and I, we were talking about how they basically need, um, like, Mass Effect, the, the universe of Mass Effect is in desperate need of, like, whatever that Star Trek, um, like, Grand Design, or whatever, the Star Trek, like, initiative like motto is where it's like do no harm and like don't interfere with other with alien civilizations you know just like go and explore massive I, I was sure but i thought about it my like, mass effect does not have something like that it does not have any like hard and fast rules about not interfering with with other evolving species at all so the solarians just treat everybody like all these evolving species like they're their playground and it's horrible a gross oversight, honestly. Okay, we're doing Cerberus stuff. Hmm. Let's see, should we let Garrus and Caden? Now to say, I just kind of want to bring Javik a lot because he's got thing to say, but he's not my most favorite to get along with, you know. Hmm. I need to change my pistol. Sorry, I'm eating dinner kind of while I do this. Give me a normal pistol. Can I just have a normal pistol? A predator, maybe? It's a four. I know the predator. I do love the spike thrower. Grandpa. The enemy has a strategic advantage in this sector thanks to the fighter squadron facility you're about to attack. It's cool, I got it. We want to seize it, but their air defenses are too strong for a frontal assault. Losses would be too cost for Hitler. That's a How do you want mean to way to this? say that. Go in the back, bring down their defenses so we can send in the troops. Good luck, Commander. I have visual contact. There's a small platform above the main landing pad. I can drop you there, but it's got to be now. Oh, Let's do okay, it. Okay, I'm gonna change my armor, dang it. I wanna wear my, um. My medieval armor, although I do like seeing my face. Ow! I gotta have re. I do have reinforced legs. Haha. <laughs> I was like, I gotta have reinforced legs, but I do have reinforced legs, actually. Missed! Oh my gosh, I love this gun. Oh, I should bring Javik because uh, Javik, I have loads of fun with Javik's slam ability. Even from a. Look at that, do you see that? 
I'm so good at this video game. I don't have my cryo ammo on. Sucks to suck, nerd. You guys have your... Yeah. He doesn't have any of the other kind. Okay. This is not the Novaria I remember. I get to see it in high definition now. Spike just sticking out of his gut. We Gucci boys. We go down. Oh, I need to keep an eye out. I think for the heater. I think there's a heater on Novaria that we want to look for. Do we want to go in there? Yeah, let me look. All on-base personnel have been processed. Integration protocols updated successfully. Oh no, they've all been turned into monsters. They've all been turned into Cerberus monsters. Thank you. Oh no. Okay, hang on. Let me bring him back. And then grab the Metagel. Uh, Caden, you couldn't help. I'm freaking, I've left Garrus out there by himself. I'm a monster. Oh wait. Yeah, okay, I have a ladder. Come here. Ah, oh, I'm so good. Money. I missed. How could I miss? He was three feet in front of me. Looks like we found the control center. Yeah, well, what was that other area that I didn't go to? Hmm? Damn it. This'll take a while. Commander, you've got enemies inbound and we can't wait. Someone's gotta get those defenses down ASAP. Garrus. Garrus, make it quick. On it. See, Caden, I'm putting trust in you to come help me fight. Also, ready, I want your electricity. Cortez, get out of there. I'll wait for your all clear, then relay to the strike force. What? Security <laughs> Couldn't be avoided. Just bring down their defenses. We'll worry about that later. Oh, hello, there you are. I did not press the right button. Oh, I knew it. I was like, oh, I was going hard on the punching, but they kept taking damage. No problem. Cortez, get out of there.
I went into the corner that I had thought I'd missed, but they all connect. I'm not sure who's like why this guy's yelling. <laughs> I was like, I thought we were moving on to the next bit, but I guess leaving him there isn't a bad thing. Let me run around really quick. It is sort of horrifying to think I'm just letting him like suffer there. Shepard, it takes two to authorize shutdown. Of course it does. Defense system deactivated. General order 7 slash 7 triggered. Establish contingency defense. Clear the landing pad. I'm tracking large scale deployment to the landing pad. Yeah, but where? That's where we need to go. Is the. the heating pad. I've gone around, or the, the heat. whatever heating module. I'm gonna look it up. the same room that we disable their stuff from hmm. did I already pick it up maybe hold on Garrus I believe in you maybe I already picked it up I picked up salvage You can purchase some of this stuff from the Spectre Requisitions. That's cool. There's a wall panel opposite the terminal containing the stabilizer schematics. That one? Oh! A pie! Advanced heating unit stabilizers. I guess it's cold enough. I was here. looking at eye level only. Let's see, it's a Garrus, actually. I do love pull. It was always, I remember when I first played. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cortez, I read you. Come in. Oh, it's a big mech, isn't it? When I first played the game, I remember I had a great time, I'm pretty sure, with Pull and, um, with the... Whoa. What am I trying to say? I had a great time with Pull and Concussive Shot.
a big giant walking Anyone target. Moving? Just the usual minor flesh. Indeed. Um. Oh hey. That's ours. Copy that, Lieutenant. Uh, sending in a mech by itself is a bad idea, right? Like, I think that's why, like, t uh, tanks, they have, like, support staff that go, like, this was a around major victory, them. Commander, a crippling blow to service operations in this sector. I'm so glad. Now all we have to do is maintain control of the facility. Cerberus won't make that easy. And we won't make it easy on them. Thanks to you, we can use their own defenses against them. Sick. Tell your team they did good, Commander. You should be proud. Thank you, sir. Thank That's you. all hacking. I like how she sounds sincere, you know? Not just like cold military. She's like, no, thanks, Grandpa. Like, I needed the boost. You know what I mean? Like, I need that. It's, it's rough out here. All this scanning we have to do. It's rough. Sorry. What did we get? Oh, yeah. They set out to stop the blood pack mercenaries attempting to enslave the sorry colonies in the terminal systems. After a ship to ship fight, the commandos and Mercs crash landed with no means to contact Thessy. The surviving Asari continued to engage the ground and blood pack, whittling down the frustrated slavers with traps, ambushes, and nighttime offensives. I mean, really, I think the Asari, like, they're like, they. I think the game does a weird thing where it's like, oh, the Asari are kind of like ladies, so, like, they have to be, like, snipers and, like, stealthers. And I'm like, they're literally born biotic. They can be actual tanks with, like, biotic powers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're not even glass cannons. Like, they can just be a cannon. But instead, they get relegated to that. And I think it's supposed to be because they're intelligent and they do kind of prefer to, like... They're kind of a mix between Turian and Solarian, right? Where they, like... Um, they have, like, commando units, which are frontline units, really. But they do, like, stealth operations and, like, backstabby operations, you know? And, like, the Solarians like to do a bunch of, like, recon beforehand. And then they have their stealth groups go in. And the Turians just go in, you know? But I do always feel like it's a bit weird. Like, I'm sorry can do a lot more than they're, like, credited with doing. To be fair, I think they're also, like, the more diplomatic, democratic group. Um, so I think they're less likely to, likely to feel just like a massive army, you know. But still, I feel, like, I feel like they don't get utilized to their full extent. After nine days and more than 100 casualties, the blood pack surrendered, and the mercenaries were astonished to learn they'd only been battling five Asari commandos. Let me just eat my words right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> While the guard downplayed their heroics, they became instant celebrities upon their return to Thessia. So, obviously, I, and I was thinking, I was like, maybe I should complete my, set, my, my thought, which is, obviously, they're badass, and they can do... Uh, an incredible amount. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Krogan, you know, who are just big, like, running right into each other, you know? Um, and obviously they were, I might just, like, edit that out. I don't know if I'm gonna remember, but just edit that <laughs> Where it's just, like, to be fair, I do wish they would have more, like, a sorry, like, in, like, tank units, essentially. But, that is not to downplay at all their extreme capabilities. And five of them against more than a hundred is like you have to play it smart and that's what the asari i think their big thing is that they're intelligent not just in recon like the salarians are but they're intelligent fighters and so i respect that i just do wish sometimes they were utilized more as tanks that's all i'm saying <laughs> see look they even have it as a was like that's a sniper unit the women are always relegated to being snipers like why can't we just go in and punch things in their face at least i have shepherd who does that Next we have a long distance engagement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That would be sick, though. Augment themselves with strength boosting cybernetic implants, and they could just haul around basically like sniper cannons. <laughs> Ooh, exterbris. Hold on. I hadn't seen that. Hmm. It went away. Why? Advanced Fighter Squadron? Yeah, okay, it was liberated from Cerberus forces in Novarium. Hmm. I mean, might as well, you know? Reuse them. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I mean, got the heating unit stabilizers. Which make me happy. Anybody wandering? 
Nope. Oh, but I should go check on my jellyfish. Anybody? Anything? Nope? Okay. <laughs> they have those, um, like, tip screens, like, loading screens. And it's funny because the game loads so fast now you can't read them. Let's see if we can't get some more scanning in. I know it's thrilling. These are the classics, Attica, Beta, Hades, Gamma, Gemini, Sigma, Argus, Rho, Exodus, Kite's Nest. Kite's Nest is the Matarian, I think. Hmm, but these are the classics. Let's go to a classic one. Been, let's go to the Attica, Beta system and see what's there. I'm sure most people know, but it is good to try to get as many as much scanning down between priority missions as possible because the Reaper's aggression resets after every priority mission. So, like, you get your aggression all like the Reaper aggression up in all the systems as you're running around trying to find stuff, and then you go to a priority mission and it resets them all. So, that's uh, useful. Oh, pretty purple. I wonder if we'll find the amaranthine planet. I don't remember if they kept it in three or not, but in one you find a planet called amaranthine, which is a city in Dragon Age, and it is specifically a city that you inhabit in the Dragon Age Origins... Oh my gosh, uh, what do the big DLC, what is it? Awakening! I almost have to look it up, but it's Awakening. Dragon Age Origins Awakening DLC. Um, which is sick. It's full of bugs. Um, like, it's super buggy, but it's a, it's a really fun DLC if you've never played it. I really enjoyed it. Just look up a bug guide or download that, like, super fix-all mod. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's a planet called Amaranthine that's named after that city. And it is also a purple planet. And Amaranthine's kind of a, it's like a bluish purple, right? And then, uh, like, the gem... Amaranthine is kind of bluish purple and the planet is bluish purple and you get to land on it actually in one and it's cool It's very pretty Ooh, during periods of increased solar flares that's what we're doing right now and I'm just really you know everyone like we're all we're all trying to do like northern lights chasing down here you know in like the lower latitudes but uh It's also like well, I sure hope we don't get like a basically an EMP blast from the Sun, you know I really don't want that uh, the auroras are bright enough to read by on the surface and be, can, can be seen with off-the-shelf optics from a distance of several AU. Surprising variety of simple carbon-based life flourishes in a complex network of cave systems that wind through the crust protected by from Hercules, heat and radiation. Anyway, I'm really mad because the one night I went hunting for them, they didn't show up, and apparently the other nights they've shown up pretty well, but I'm like, I don't, I don't have any more time. <laughs> Oh, I think this is one you can land on. Yeah, you can land on this planet. Yeah. In one. And because you can, you can land on this planet and run around, and it's really pretty, but there's like spores floating through the air that you can kind of see. Um, and uh, and you don't want to, you don't want to do that. You don't want to inhale them. I remember that one. So there was nothing on that planet. Is there even anything worth scanning for in here? Signal confirmed. Ooh. I think there was a Cerberus operation going on on this planet, but I can't remember, like in one.
infer interferometric array. Is it something with metal? A metal scanner? Let's go out into this big I ah, see I knew it I heard it I knew it there's always something out on like kind of the rightish emptiness in the void Ooh this one's pretty I remember this one because it's kind of spooky it's got like a two wide open eyes with like a wide open mouth like it's a ghost from the universe or a dead god or something that's like you know, and it's got like these little like I don't know antlers or horns or something, and it's like green and spooky. Ooh, spooky! Theseus and Hercules. Cute. This is obviously a human system. I do miss landing on the planets in one. Someday I hope we get another game. But they, yeah, the game that they actually promised us when they were making Andromeda where you could land. I don't necessarily, like like they were saying, like I don't need to have like hundreds of like fully fleshed out worlds that are like inhabited by alien species. Not every rock is gonna do that, right? Like not every planetoid is gonna have life on it. You know, not even plant life or microbial life necessarily, but like, just a bunch of planets where I can run around and like pick up some stuff and like maybe encounter like an outpost of some sort. Like, I'm cool with that. I enjoyed that in one a lot. <sighs> Making a atmosphere a striking mix of browns, blues, and whites. That is definitely not what I am seeing here. Both have signs of former Prothean development, suggesting showing may have been mined for helium three. <laughs> So we should scan this one for sure. Nothing? That makes me sad. I already looked at that one. There's Prothean stuff over there. Oh, this one's cool. Planets higher than blah blah blah. The remains of a well developed Prothean mining infrastructure throughout the planet. Abandoned mines are connected to dead cities by collapsed maglev lines. Unlike the crumbling skyscrapers of Pharos, Quanah's ruins are reasonably intact. Are you joking me? Pharos's ruins were in excellent condition until they freaking apparently got. That was wild to me, even at the time, that an entire corporation could get access to old Prothean ruins. I guess it, I think they specifically said they had been like surveyed before. There was really nothing of like. Pr there was no Prothean technology there that was like. Like, because you're supposed to share Prothean technology, right? Like, that's the, that's the mandate across the, the, the galaxy, is that you're supposed to share any Prothean technology you come across with everybody else, like, with all the other species. Um, so I was like, why are they, why is some human corporation, I think it was sort of human, being allowed to, like, tramble about in these ruins? It is, I think it's because there was nothing of, like, technological value there, but the archaeologist in me wants to scream and cry and run around punching business people and executives in the face. Unfortunately, this only made it easier for looters to strip the sign of Acropolis of anything valuable. Do they? There has got to be protections in place. Like, and they, they have to have an entire, like, y y on a society, on a societies, on a galactic community built upon Prothean technology. You cannot tell me that they don't have like, entire task forces dedicated to the protection of prominent, at least, Prothean ruins. You know what I'm saying? Like, there would be, like, the, the Italy, freaking, I think it's Italy. Is it Greece? One of them has, like, an entire, like, art, like, what is it called? I am going to look it up. I think it was, I think it's Italian. Yeah, the Carabinieri, I don't, I don't think I'm saying that right, but the Carabinieri 
Art Squad. It's responsible for combating art and antiquities crime and is viewed as an experienced and efficient task force. It has um, been doing a lot better in recent decades. But it's like, basically they're like, yo, like our, this entire place, it Italy, is full of ruins and they've been plundered and taken for like centuries. And you know what? We're down with that. We're down with that. So for their own country, they have, an, they have a task force that is specifically to like art and antiquities theft. Like, that's all they do, is track that down, you know? And like, get it back. And even for museums, like, they have pull, and like, they have enough pull, if they can like, track provenience, or if they can prove that the museum does not have a proper provenience, paperwork done, they can get it back. You know what I mean? Like, they have that right. And like, they're good at it. And you're telling me, that we don't have that here. Like, Italy, they're just like, it's like a cultural thing, right? It's not necessarily like, like, like their technology was built upon it. Their society kind of was, like, you know, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I'm talking like in space when like we, nobody knew, what, nobody figured it out for themselves independently on how to do space travel or like how to do like light speed travel, essentially. It's not really light speed, but you know, like we never, they didn't figure out anything except how to like go into space and like fly around at normal speeds, you know? That was all dependent on protein technology. And so to create this galactic alliance, you have to have that technology. And you're telling, I'm just, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but it just boggles my mind that they wouldn't have like an entire citadel unit, like fleet, fleets, many, plural, dedicated, and like laws and rules and regulations and drones at least set up to like watch the ruins and see who's coming in there and messing stuff up. I'm just, I've been on many soapboxes today. <laughs> I don't know where my Baldur's Gate uploads are at, but I did a massive one today on like intolerance towards refugees. <laughs> oh, yeah, I read it. Let's see. So I'm going to try it. I want to read both of these first. Pharaohs. Can I land on Pharaohs? I can't land on This is This is the system with Pharaohs. I thought they were just comparing it to Pharaohs, but it's right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, blankets, two thirds of the planet landmass. Atmosphere is foul with dust. There's indication that Pharaohs was a much colder world in the past. Apparently, they're still kind of here. Guarantee you, there's something I found here. Something. Yeah. Between these two planets, there's something. Am I gonna rescue the colonists? Just like that would be hilarious if I just like took me like a whole landing mission in like two hours or like an hour. I don't remember that either, like two hours in the last game, some of all the little mini missions. Um, and then they're gonna be like, yep, oh, you found them with your stupid little probe. Exogeny scientists. Well, we just, how nice. Glad we could help. Logan. Why is his name Logan? Ooh, this reported strange disturbances in Logan's cloud band, suggesting many remarkably large... <gasps> yes, it's this planet, right? Where the large solid objects were present beneath the cloud top the ship approached, and they subsided one by one. These disturbances have not been reported again. It could be sign of, like, a whole other species that have kept themselves, or, like, um, some sort of, like, death, because I was assuming they were kind of, like, Casket shaped, you know. I think in the previous game they are mentioned as casket shaped, um, which is very generic and vague. Like, do freaking like, like what, the Alcor? What does their casket shape look like? If they even have caskets, right? Like Hannah probably don't have caskets, you know. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, it could be just like a technological thing, right? Or like, like if in order to like prevent the whatever, like, ritual burials or whatever from being noticed. And they could be not even Prothean, right? It could be even earlier. It's just, I guess, difficult for us to scan these gas giants or explore them at all. All right. I'm gonna scan over here. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna go over here really fast. Here it is. Luckily, they don't move on me while I'm in the... In the investigatory, successful. investigatory phase. Oh, we did it. 100% of Attica Beta.
Yeah, it really sucks if you, whatever, wherever you've got the jump relay. If you make them mad at the jump relay, it's a bad idea. And with that, we'll go ahead and cut it off there. This is, again, just sort of the generic outro I'm doing while I'm in Italy. Uh, some of these episodes will be a little shorter. Some of them will be a little longer. Uh, but I did my best just trying to make sure I had enough while I was going to be gone. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fame, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my Forest Tier patron, who has gone above and beyond and is supportive of me in the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.